So uh, Koen, we're here uh, uh, in your office at the University of Utrecht. Uh, you're also really uh, busy, uh, busy with the sharing economy. But uh, what are you doing over here? Well, I'm a professor in innovation studies at the uh, Copernicus Institute of Sustainable Development at Utrecht University. And we teach our students uh, with a science background, uh, also a bit of uh, economics, sociology, management science, so that they can learn how to manage innovation processes uh, after graduation. Okay, and you've got a really special interest for the sharing economy. So yeah. how, how, how did it, uh, that's, uh, that come? Well, I started researching uh, sharing economy when I uh, became uh, a member of a car sharing uh, club. Uh, and when I talked about that with my fellow colleagues, they were all very skeptical about whether car sharing could really grow big and become an alternative for car ownership. Well, I had an intuition that uh, it could be skilled, uh, especially in, 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 in large cities. Uh, and so that's uh, why I entered the topic. And when was it? That was around 2010. Okay, so that's already five years ago. Yeah. Okay, and, 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 and in these five years, so what do you saw? Because the, the sharing economy is, is really growing really fast. So, so what are your main insights and, and, and surprises in, in what happens? Well, I think uh, the main question is uh, why does it scale so fast uh, and why did it emerge in the first place? Um, and in my view, we have to realize that sharing economy as such already existed before the advent of Internet. Because if you define sharing as the practice in which consumers grant each other temporary access to their goods, possibly for money, uh, then we already did that. Uh, however, we only did this with, uh, with family and friends because we could trust them. Now the platforms uh, make it possible for us to share with strangers and they take away a lot of the uncertainties uh, with guarantees or insurances or reviews. And that's why it's become a big market. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and so that, that, that was my first kind of assessment of, of, the, uh, of the sharing economy. The second uh, contribution, if you like, uh, in the public debate in the Netherlands and also abroad was to define sharing economy in a, in a rather precise way. Um, so for me, it's really about uh, consumers who have assets, goods that they underutilize and uh, they grant each other's uh, access to these goods on a temporary basis. And that means that if you have a home where you live and you go on holidays, you can rent it out to someone else. But if you have two homes and one of them you rent out all year long, it's not sharing economy. Yeah because you were not utilizing it in the first place, you are basically running an illegal hotel. Same for, uh, for mobility. Uh, there are people who, uh, you know, who offer uh, the, the possibility uh, of hitchhiking through BlaBlaCar, for example. Well, then you are uh, utilizing underutilized capacity uh, by taking someone with you on a trip you <coughs> already plan to do. But if you on demand uh, provide uh, a taxi service for someone, uh, which you would otherwise not uh, carry out, then it's no longer sharing economy. And that's what uh, me and uh, Tom Mailer wrote down. And uh, I think that helped the discussion in the Netherlands about Uber, Airbnb and other forms of, of sharing. Yeah, yeah, because what you see, especially with the new platform, they're really smart marketers. So they really love to be a part of the sharing economy. It's, it's a fun story. I had an interview with, uh, with Floyd one of the uh, CEOs of, of, of Helpling, a, a, a cleaning platform. And I also go ask him because <coughs> he says, okay, we are sharing economy. And I said, no, you're not. I said, ah, but that's the, the definition stuff, you have to leave it uh, to the lawyers. <laughs> and I said, <coughs> interesting. So uh, in what way do you look at, at, at the, the new platforms who are coming in? Because they're really, really new, new platforms. They really got a background uh, as brand managers at Heineken, Unilever, uh, Goldman Sachs. <coughs> And they enter markets who are not really this good in communicating, to say it really, really, uh, <laughs> really nice. Well, what is interesting to note that uh, the main uh, 
companies in the Netherlands, Snapcar for car sharing, and then Uber, which is not a uh, sharing economy, but uh, uh, obviously an important player, is that they, they hired uh, or are founded by people with a marketing background at Unilever or Heineken. And I think this is not a coincidence because the main uh, challenge for a new platform is not technological. Uh, is of course finding a good business model, but maybe the most important one is explaining to the public uh, what you're doing is something they should like. Because it's a new social practice, it runs against a lot of uh, routines and habits of consumers. So you have to uh, convince them. And many of these platforms, they don't have marketing budgets, so they have to use the media to get their message across. And that's why you need very good communicators. And I think uh, most of the time they, uh, they do a good job. And even uh, if they are uh, raising controversy um, and, and being very blunt about uh, their proposition, <coughs> it can be a good marketing strategy because at least people start talking about it yeah. and start considering whether to use it or not. Yeah, yeah, but I think that uh, that will that that will be a successful till a certain point, uh, because then people will get, will get annoyed and say, okay, but uh, uh, what I saw with Uber, uh, everybody was, was really positive about it, but at the moment that uh, the tech services enter their office and they say, oh, uh, uh, so so our money isn't welcome uh, in the Netherlands, and then the media say, okay, but first start paying taxes and <laughs> then we're going to talk again. So I think it's it's, it's a good strategy, uh, also really playing the role of the disruptor. But in the end, you have to grow up and also take responsibility. Yeah, but if you see what uh, Uber uh, did in the Netherlands, uh, they uh, they tried to uh, to extend their legal service as long as possible. But they always, or let's say at the at the early stage, uh, they announced that if uh, the the legal ruling was such that it was not allowed, they would stop it and instead start a legal mm. version and that's what they did yeah so uh well, i think they they <coughs> they were uh, <coughs> uh they had a good timing in changing their strategy just before indeed the general public uh, would become more negative about yeah. them yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but but uh, uber pop is still uh, uh, running for 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 loyal customers in Amsterdam, but it's. I it's think it will really, be phased really out. Small. Uh, and they don't uh, allow new customers anymore, and instead they launched what they call here UberX, uh, which is uh, which is the service that uh, only uses uh, chauffeurs that have a license, and uh, it's completely yeah. legal. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. and it works. So uh, I think uh, both Uber, in the end. And also the Dutch government, uh, uh, yeah, ha have pursued good strategies, uh, not uh, trying to um, have the conflict escalate, but rather uh, discuss the pros and cons of new business models and how it can be fitted in 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 in, in the existing regulations and whether some of those existing regulations should be. Uh, changed so yeah. that these business models can uh, can work. Yeah. Same for Airbnb. Uh, yeah. In a way, Amsterdam, the municipality of Am Amsterdam, can be proud that they were the first city in the world to come up with uh, detailed uh, rules for their citizens under what conditions you are allowed to uh, rent out your home. So no longer than 60 days a year, no more than four people at the same time. Tourist tax has to be paid etc etc and that gave clarity uh, to uh, to citizens uh, clarity to airbnb and also clarity if you like to the hotel uh, business uh, and unfortunately there are still quite a number of people who do not uh, follow these uh, rules so it's important these people uh, are monitored and 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 and, and possibly punished uh, in in my view Be, um, uh, but yeah, again, uh, both Airbnb and, uh, and, and the government, in this case the, the municipality of Amsterdam, uh, in a kind of uh, process of co-creation of, of uh, both trying to contribute to these uh, innovations, I think they did a good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So we're talking about sharing economy, and still we're talking uh, most of the times about Uber. So 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 let's let's forget them uh, <laughs> yes. uh, for for the rest of, of, of the discussion. Yeah. Because uh, what are your main, what do you think are the main challenges or maybe also concerns uh, for the sharing economy to really grow to its full potential? Um, well, I think uh, I think it will uh, because a sharing economy, as 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 as, as we define it is really about uh, goods that people already own and they rent it out to others. So I think that practice will almost automatically grow. Think of uh, eBay. Uh, when it first started, uh, maybe people were reluctant to use it, but now everyone in the Netherlands almost uses eBay. And the sharing economy is a natural extension of that. So, in addition of selling your goods second-hand to other consumers, you're also renting out your goods to other consumers. And what first looked like a very radical new practice will become, I think, a main and mainstream uh, practice. Yeah, but I think that that's, all, that, that's also really something that has to happen, will also go mainstream. Because it, it because it really has to uh, to come in, in, in the daily habits of people, yeah. uh, or else it will never grow. Uh, and this will also have effect on the target group where the platforms are uh, are pointing at. Uh, because now I had a discussion in Brussels at the European Crossroads Week uh, uh, yesterday uh, with a guy in the UK who had a a, 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 a sharing platform where li like blah blah car, but then for packages. So there are, I think, now ten startups in Europe uh, busy with that market mm -hmm. because, it, of course, it's a big market. And I s ask him, okay, but you're really listening now, really good to your customers and you are, are, are transforming your products to the needs they have, but aren't you now transforming your products to the needs of a really small target group, uh, a target group of, of really uh, intrinsic motivated people, uh, people who are, uh, with a sustainable background, uh, high education, uh, and we, if you want to scale, yeah. uh, probably you will need to reach a uh, other target group. So I think it's also a, a, a challenge for the platforms to really define yeah. what their target group is. And because uh, the same like with car sharing, it started with people with a really sustainable motivations. Uh, but in the end, uh, when you look at when it's going to main be, be mainstream, the main motivation will, uh, uh, will be money. Yeah. And of course, some people will still have the, uh, the uh, sustainable motivations, but in the end, it's just, uh, yeah, changing. It's money and flexibility. Yeah, because uh, without ownership but access, you can uh, typically access anywhere you are at any time. Yeah, a particular uh, good like a car or uh, or, or a house. Um, now you're right that uh, it started, of course, with particular type of consumers. But if you look at uh, surveys, uh, if you ask people if they are willing to share, although it's a hypothetical question. Uh, it says something. Uh, there are very little differences between income groups, age groups, uh, and, and education uh, groups. Uh, furthermore, um, if you look at uh, the, 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 the neighborhoods where there are many cars that are being shared, this can, uh, this can be neighborhoods uh, with low income or high income or low education, high education. So. Uh, the evidence so far suggests that uh, many different types of people, possibly for different motivations, mm. are entering uh, this uh, sharing economy. Um, and uh, and, and th that's what you see in many innovations. It starts with a particular group of people for ideological reasons. Uh, think of vegetarian food. Yeah? Uh, it was very hard to be vegetarian uh, a long time ago. You couldn't go to a restaurant, whatever, there was no vegetarian dish on the menu. But now it's become common practice and, 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 uh, and, and many uh, people, even if they don't have any ideology, uh, start to eat less meat. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, these social practices can diffuse without the ideology that initially started it uh, diffusing with it. Yeah, and 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 that's what I, why I think uh, it will it will uh, let's say automatically scale, but it will not necessarily scale very fast mm -hmm. uh, because it takes time for people first to know about sharing economy. Yeah, we 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 of course uh, 
think about it almost on a daily basis, but maybe half of the Dutch population doesn't know what is car sharing. Yeah. So if they don't know, they cannot have made the decision whether or not to adopt it. Uh, so, so, so these processes take time and they take uh, possibly uh, government, uh, uh, government action. For example, if you want, really want to stimulate car sharing, there are fiscal measures that you can take as, as a government. For example, making parking much more expensive or somehow make it fisc fiscally attractive uh, not to own a car anymore. Yeah. Uh, so it also depends on, uh, on how uh, the government and, and, and voters for particu particular parties will, uh, will react. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's also a thing about communications because in the end it's about the solution you offer. Uh, and that's also the way you have to communicate. Like uh, my parents, they used Airbnb about two years before I started using it. Not because it was sharing economy, but it was the best solution for yeah. what they want. Yeah. Uh, and I think also with car sharing, it's the same. Yeah. So the, the, the communication is not about sharing, but it's about yeah. having a, a, a good solution. And with, with cars, like I have a Volvo V70. It's a really, really, really big, uh, ugly car, yeah. uh, but I have two kids. Uh, so I want to have it in front of my house. and. Uh, yeah. I throw all the stuff uh, inside when we go away, <coughs> but eight out of ten uh, times I am driving it uh, by myself. Yeah. So in the end, you have never the ideal car because in, in every situation you want another car. And I think that's 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 one of the biggest benefits of car sharing. Yeah. Uh, like when the sun is shining, I want to drive a convertible. And that's why I now tend to say, if you really love cars, you should do car sharing because then you can access any kind of car that you like, yeah. depending on the trip you make or the mood you are in. Yeah. So what started as something that was almost a protest against cars, car ownership, and the whole culture that has uh, emerged around it in the, in the last century, now can also turn into something very positive, also for people who love cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and I think it will really grow really fast when also, so also the threshold will be lower. And that's also, I think, an interesting. Uh, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to hear uh, your your view on that, uh, because uh, now when you're uh, uh, when you, when you look at car sharing, when you go uh, to Snapcar or, or MyWheels or whatever platform, uh, then uh, you really have to go to the person and then look the car, yeah. then get over the keys. So it's it's quite the threshold is is, is quite high. Uh, in the end, uh, we will have more things like smart locks uh, where it will be easier. Uh, but then the social and personal contact will be different uh, when you look at, at the insurance of the cars. Uh, like when I'm uh, uh, hiring a car at a rental company, I'm not really good for the car because I think, okay, hey, don't be gentle, it's a rental. It's yeah. not a coincidence that people are saying this. Yeah. Uh, when you have the physical context, so when I'm renting your car, then I think, okay, hey, it's Koen's car. So, and I also have to return to yeah. Koen. Uh, so then I will be much more careful with it. Uh, what do you think will happen with the social consequences and the social benefits of sharing when uh, the threshold will be lower by using automatic things like, like smart locks. Well, I think you're right that uh, the, the, the recent trend is that the contact between peers is becoming less because either intermediaries or technology uh, is, is, is making it uh, no longer necessary to, to, to physically meet. Uh, same with Airbnb. Uh, very often you don't meet the person anymore who is renting out uh, the apartment. And that's why I think uh, in, 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 in the long run uh, it will become something uh, yeah, part of, of, of our economy rather than uh, changing our society. Uh, I tend to think of it uh, now as uh, that uh, we happen to own particular goods that can be used as a production factor uh, for, for, for services for other people. So we start to, uh, to make economic use uh, of, 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 of goods that we already have. And uh, I, yeah, I can imagine that in, in the future, many people rent out their homes when they are not there without even knowing who is in their home because, mm. the, because the company and the technology takes away yeah, all the sorrow, all the need for, for physical contact. Yeah. Well, you may see this as something uh, um, undesirable or uh, yeah, uh, the promise of a kind of social revolution is, is not uh, fulfilled. Uh, 
yeah, the, the, but but if you want, if you ask me what to predict, I think that th this will be the main trend in the yeah. next coming yeah, years. Yeah, I, I share as well because I think that, 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 that that's also the only way to scale up. Yeah, uh, and also um, that also make me think uh, uh, to the uh, uh, just park concept in in the in, in UK uh, uh, sharing parking spaces. Yeah. They started as a peer-to-peer -peer parking spacing share platform. Uh, so when you're not at home, then you can rent out your parking space uh, to others. Yeah. Uh, but then they made a step to, uh, uh, and then their name was also Park at My House. Uh, so now they changed their, their, their name to Just Park about a year ago. And yeah. now they're also offering parking spaces in commercial garages. Uh, yeah. Because in the end, uh, and then we're also going to the, um, uh, the more to the uh, on-demand economy. In the end, it's, it's again the solution you are offering to the customer and also the solution at the moment where you are in the context where you are. Yes. So we, like with the parking spaces, when I'm uh, 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 going to Amsterdam now for the interview for, for business uh, and I think, okay, I want to park, then I have uh, two choices uh, with just park when you're also in Amsterdam. Okay, I can uh, uh, walk for 100 meter and park for 10 hours an hour or I, I can walk uh, 10 minutes and I pay two hours. And no. in the end, I'm the, the, the no. individual makes the decision. No. And there's also something I like about BlaBlaCar, also about the name, because they say, okay, uh, uh, yeah, you can choose if you want blah, no. blah, blah, or blah, 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 no. or no talking, a little bit of talking, much talking. And no. in the end, you're, uh, you as an individual are, are going to make the decision. I think also there's also a, a prediction that also um, uh, 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 platforms like Snapcar or also like Airbnb will also offer commercial services uh, like a car renting uh, a, a company or a hotel business no. into the platform because in the end then they're really going to be a end solution for the customer no. and, 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 and like a one-stop shop. I think no. that will be really good for them. No. No, you're right, and uh, there are of, of course other uh, issues that may uh, slow down uh, the further rise of the sharing economy. Uh, it can become an, uh, an important political topic uh, because uh, I think uh, many people uh, start to realize that the gains uh, of the sharing economy are not equally uh, distributed. In particular, uh, also if you if you look at the numbers for the Netherlands, almost all money uh, that is being made is in 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 the housing, in Airbnb and the like. Uh, it means that only those who own a house can make money out of the sharing economy. Of course, those lower incomes who do not own houses, uh, they have access to cheaper rental houses. If they go on holidays but uh, for their permanent house that they have to rent they may have to start pay higher rents uh, so there is a serious issue that uh, there may be true losers of the sharing economy mm -hmm. uh, because of this uh, housing market developing in Amsterdam for example as in Berlin Barcelona in in in, in rather um, serious uh, uh, serious ways uh, so that can be a political issue and 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 may uh, there may be a call for further regulation and maybe uh, changing the rule of 60 days a year maybe to only 30 days a year or, or even less um, yeah I also think that uh, what we don't know yet enough which is also of importance for political parties is what are the exact environmental impacts mm -hmm. Because if the environmental impacts are uh, strong, uh, there's a, a reason to, to subsidize it. Um, and that can further help the development of, uh, of the sharing economy. Now, I have been uh, in contact with uh, people here at the Netherlands Environmental Assessment Agency. And uh, in, their, in their study uh, on the effects of car sharing and... Uh, they do find uh, quite substantial uh, positive effects uh, because, uh, let's say, for every 10 uh, persons who start doing car sharing, three cars are taken off uh, the road. Um, so we can probably uh, continue to drive as many kilometers as before, but with fewer cars, and it means fewer production and disposal of cars, energy savings, uh, CO2 uh, savings. But 
that's car sharing. Then, of course, other items uh, will uh, that do not use so much energy will have uh, uh, less effect. And housing may have maybe even opposite effects. Because if um, renting a house becomes so cheap, it means the tourist market will further grow and it means air travel will further grow. And we know air travel uh, is, the, is, is, is the fastest growing polluter uh, in, 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 in the economy. So again, uh, it may be not enough just to, um, uh, as, a, as, as a government, just to, uh, to stimulate the sharing economy. Maybe uh, more severe measures are needed to really um, benefit from, from, from the potential uh, environmental impact. So for example, um, Dan Wedderpol from, from PRB once uh, uh, had a vision, a, a long-run vision about the sharing economy. He said, well, what we're doing now is we are building uh, consumer communities who share their goods. Uh, but once these communities are big, uh, we can have big firms offering their products on, their platf on, on that platform for rent. And if Peerby then remains uh, true to their principles, they will only allow firms that uh, offer products uh, that are designed in the most uh, environmentally friendly manner, mm -hmm. that <coughs> everything can be recycled, uh, that it's um, easy to repair, easy to use. And that can spur a, a different innovation process in uh, the manufacturing firms. Uh, same for car sharing. Yeah. If, if we don't own cars but uh, share cars, uh, the companies may step in with their own proposition, like Car2Go already does. And they can uh, offer you very small cars, electric cars, uh, maybe uh, self-driving cars. And then the sharing economy can be a kind of intermediate step or a kind of uh, uh, leverage point mm -hmm. for the old economy to, to transform itself into a more sustainable direction. So I think, again, the sharing economy as such may not have, have, may not have a lot of environmental impact. Uh, but if it is um, true that uh, the sharing practices will also change the business models of large manufacturing firms mm. and the way they design and offer their products, then I think it can have a huge effect. Yeah, that's also maybe why so many car companies are e doing experience because the car, uh, because in the end, when you look at change and innovation at, at corporate organization, uh, there also has to be a uh, sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the times that comes too late, so when they're already going down. Uh, but I think the, the automotive industry is a really interesting industry because they already know now, okay, in, in 10, 20, 30 years, we're only having self-driving cars, uh, so we need less cars. Yeah. We have no idea who is going to own these cars. Mm -hmm. Are these uh, car renting companies, are these the, the people self, or th there are many different the, uh, uh, the different things yeah. for that. But they know, okay, there is a point in our future that will be uh, uh, force us to really, yeah. really change our model. And the sharing economy is also a way to experiment already with these, yeah. uh, these new models. Yeah, and what's... What I think is interesting is that these uh, car manufacturing firms uh, also see new opportunities because uh, you, you may sell uh, or produce fewer cars, but per car you make much more money by offering services uh, to, uh, to the users. Uh, if they uh, retain ownership of the car and rent out the car, they also retain ownership over all the data the car and the drivers are generating. And with that data, uh, you can build new business models, you can sell the data, uh, and you can uh, maybe have new uh, marketing models, mm. advertisement models, entertainment models. Uh, so. I, re I really think that uh, the car manufacturing companies uh, uh, are, are preparing for a new future and uh, 
and 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 doing it in a, in a in a clever way. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. And 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 they're doing something. So that's a, that, that's yeah. already yeah. a start. So, uh, by the way, I'm not really uh, uh, in the same line with your data discussion because I really think that in the end, and data is also really important discussion, especially also rep reputation data mm -hmm. in the sharing economy. I think in the end, the data will be go back. Because uh, what you just explained, that's, that's also still a situation where the companies are owning the data and making profit of it. And I really believe that in the future, the data will be more in control by the owners uh, themselves. There was a nice example I had in, in, in Estonia. Uh, uh, they're running really, really running their country as a platform. And what they're doing uh, uh, as an as, as a, uh, inhabitant, you can access all your data through one platform, but you can always see uh, who, who has watched my data? Yeah. Uh, and when you think, okay, but I don't want you to see my data, then you can uh, uh, report uh, uh, to the government, okay, this guy yeah. saw my data, but I have no idea what he wants with, so go check it out. And from now, I will... Well, again, uh, you're right. It will, it will crucially depend on how uh, each country or the European Union uh, will design uh, privacy laws, ownership laws, information laws. And, uh, and I think that will be uh, maybe the biggest uh, debate in, in, in the future, which is not uh, only about sharing economy, but about the whole uh, information uh, society. Um, and obviously, there are also downsides of, uh, of, of, of companies owning so much information about you uh, because they can tailor uh, products and services, which may be nice, but they also tailor the exact price for you and try to charge you as much as possible, um, uh, depending on their assessment of your willingness to pay. So in, 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 in an economic sense, it is uh, it's very important we have uh, better privacy laws and that consumers at least can choose what kind of level of privacy they, they prefer. Yeah. Uh, but that we also have to think about sensor data, okay? So if companies are the ones that um, that design products, including the sensors, yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure they will try to do everything uh, to uh, to convince governments that 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 they uh, uh, should have automatic access to those uh, data. Maybe also because the government wants to monitor the companies about their environmental uh, behavior, their safety behavior. So, yeah, you may be optimistic about uh, empowerment of citizens and consumers having control over their data. Uh, but we also know that uh, companies have a large say uh, in government policy and will try to uh, to get m as much of those data as, as possible. Yeah, oh. yeah, uh, I'm really <laughs> true that uh, yeah. I, I really know the companies because in the end, also the same with uh, with uh, reputation data on sharing platforms. Uh, the sharing platforms are, uh, because they're building up this database uh, 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 about reputation data and also other data. And of course, they see it as one of their assets. Yeah. And it's also one of the assets they use when they go talk to investors. Uh, yeah. So they will never give it up for free. Uh, so there already has to, uh, or from government, or from society, where they say, okay, the 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 crowd is, is building new platforms where they where they control. So in the end, they really have to need to give free to be able to compete to others. No. Uh, I really believe, believe that that's the only way this will change. But in the end, of course, the the, the, the corporates or or the platforms, no. uh, they really want to give the data because no. yeah, uh, data is is power, no. like many people say. Well, and 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 related to this, uh, the the other key question, which also. Uh, Julia Shore uh, uh, what is, is raising is, is it really so likely that the platforms will remain corporates? Or uh, will, we, will we as, as users, as citizens, be able to build our own platforms? Uh, or even have some kind of government platforms? And uh, I think she is right when she says uh, that we should not overestimate uh, the power of these platforms. Uh, what she sees happening in the US uh, is that in many uh, markets, uh, platforms come and go. Uh, different governance structures are being uh, tried out. Uh, different payment systems are now being uh, used. So apart from regular money, you can have virtual coins. 
and uh, it is very open uh, how this uh, will uh, play out because the technology itself is not so difficult to uh, develop in some cases it's already available as open source so everyone can start a platform if you need uh, server capacity you can just rent it at amazon if you need a payment system you can just uh, connect your your platform to paypal or or, or maybe bitcoin so it is, yeah, we enter an age in which uh, these platforms by mix and match with other uh, technological elements can create new, uh, almost endless combinations and variations. Yep. And then it's up to uh, the users and, 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 and governments uh, what kind of platforms are most uh, used and, 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 and valued. Yep. So I do think, uh, yeah, it's not a coincidence that the first platforms are built by, by entrepreneurs and, and uh, who want to build uh, for-profit companies. But that doesn't mean they w the, that the platforms will always be for-profit. Yeah, yeah, uh, I really agree on that because in the end uh, you really have to look, okay, what is the value a platform add? And also what, what are the unique elements? And also like with car sharing, one of the unique elements uh, is the insurance. Uh, but from now, maybe in a year, maybe two, maybe three years, but in the end uh, also uh, car sharing insurance will be included yes. in the regular policies uh, yeah. of, 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 of the consumers yeah. uh, for, for many, many, many reasons. Uh, so I think it will be really interesting. And also um, uh, because now when you look at platforms, uh, they're really new uh, for the outside, but really old fashioned organized and financed and also really short term financed uh, from the inside. Uh, so I really believe that, it will, that, that we're just in, 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 in an in a in between phase and in the end we'll be uh, having more, much more uh, uh, like a, a cooperation based platforms, maybe more decentralized built, built uh, on the blockchain technology. So there are really yeah. cool, cool things uh, happening yeah. now. Talking about the governments, because when you look at, uh, and, and, and that's the last question, yeah. because we're really running out of time, yeah. but it's no problem, it's, it's, an, it's a nice conversation. Uh, talking about the governments, um, you can uh, uh, relate a sharing economy on two ways with, uh, with governments. Okay, how does the government have to respond on the sharing economy? So that's more about policy and regulations, mm -hmm. but also on, okay, how can you as a government use the sharing or maybe the collaborative economy to, uh, to really be a better government? And this is also um, again related to the Estonia case because uh, Estonia, uh, 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 they were separated from Russia a couple of years or quite some years ago. And they say, okay, we're a small country. We only have 1.3 million in in inhabitants. So um, yeah, nobody will know us in the world. And that's also, of course, a, 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 a threat because yeah, then maybe some things will happen with Russia again in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and also we want to, 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 uh, to give our inhabitants a certain level of uh, a service. But if we are going to organize it as the old fashioned way, we will never be, be able to, to afford it because we're such a small country. So they built their, uh, 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 their government system like a platform. Uh, everything is digital. Uh, they can vote digital from 2009. Uh, even <coughs> new laws are signed digitally. So they're really, really good in that. And uh, there you see that that's a, a country is, is using the platform technology to be a better government. So at, at, at what way do you think, so that's are two questions. First, uh, what are the main issues in government uh, regarding to, to really facilitating uh, and also maybe controlling the sharing economy, but also how do you think that government be, can be a better government by using these kind of, uh, of, of techniques or visions? Uh, well, on, on the first question, uh, yeah, I think uh, one of the major concerns is the monopoly power that some of the platforms uh, may develop. Well, again, apart from Airbnb, which is an international market, uh, I think monopoly power may not be our biggest concern because we're talking about local markets. Uh, so, and, and we're talking about low startup costs for alternative platforms. Uh, and even if there are monopolies, if those rents they earn are again invested in innovation, uh, consumers still benefit. Um, but it is of obviously something uh, of concern. And then uh, on your second question, uh, whether governments can um, 
can really make use of the sharing economy itself, that's potentially a much bigger uh, issue. Uh, so the first thing they can think about is how they can make better use of all the assets uh, they already have, cars, buildings, uh, machinery, what have you. Uh, and I think that, that, that will be not so uh, difficult to organize. Uh, the second, what you already alluded to, is that maybe also certain services, public services, uh, that are now run under uh, government control, uh, like nursing or education or uh, safety, uh, gardening, uh, what have you, that citizens can, can, can organize that themselves through peer-to-peer uh, -peer platforms. That would not be sharing uh, in, in the true sense, but it would uh, be um, close to the sharing economy. Now, I'm not uh, against that, but we have to realize that uh, not all people will take part in those uh, systems, will be able to take part in those systems. So, for example, if you don't have particular skills uh, that uh, gives you good reviews or um, yeah, earns you points, for example, in, in such community-based uh, systems, yeah, how can you uh, get services back? So there is a need uh, somehow to protect those uh, that, uh, that, that cannot uh, be part of those self-organizing citizen mm -hmm. systems. Uh, yeah, so, so yeah, there, is a, there are many possible futures and I think one of my roles uh, in the whole debate also uh, based on, 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 on what we teach students about innovation, what we know about the history of other kinds of innovations, is, is to stress the contingency, the, the open-endedness of this whole process. And in the short run, we can have some, some informed predictions, but in the long run, uh, many different uh, uh, yeah, futures are possible with big or, la uh, or less a uh, role of, of companies, of governments, of self-organizing citizen movements. Uh, and I have no reason to believe, uh, looking also back to history, that it will all be fi just fine and we enter into a utopian age, or it will all be uh, big brothers watching you and we enter uh, a very uh, uh, frightening period. I think uh, we, as normal, uh, it will be something in the middle and we should uh, discuss it and, and, and shape it uh, together. Yeah, cool. So let's keep the, doing the discussions uh, and, and shaping it together. Yeah. So thanks for the interview and, uh, and uh, we'll see what uh, will uh, happen next. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.